Good day. My name is David Wild, and this is part one of a three-part lecture on chapter two on the history of management from Connect Master Management 2.0. By the end of this lesson on the history of management, you will be able to explain why the study of management is important. You'll be able to analyze how historical management still influences modern day management. You'll be able to analyze the influence of scientific management on productivity and on the practice of management. You'll be able to evaluate the key principles of the administrative and bureaucratic perspectives to evaluate how human relations management influences current day management decisions and to compare the contemporary approaches to management. So let's first talk about why do we and why should we care about management history. Studying management history and management related theories helps us learn from our failures and recreate our successes. An important feature of organizations is that they have rules and policies. These exist for a reason and only by understanding the context of the decisions, the history, do we really understand why these rules exist? By understanding the history of management thought and development, we can better anticipate what might happen in the future. And we might be able to have a broader base of ideas to deal with that future when it happens by knowing how past leaders and managers dealt with similar situations. Institutions such as the military, religious organizations, communities and governments, just to name a few, have been in existence for thousands of years and have long relied on people to manage their operations. But while the management we know of in today's organizations, modern management, draws from these older established examples, it has been fundamentally altered by some key events over the past several hundred years, the time known as the Industrial Revolution. Figure one If you look at figure one, this depicts a timeline of historical events and the corresponding broader perspectives of management that we will discuss in this lesson. As you can see in this timeline, we look from the development of the domestic style of production in the mid 1700s all the way through developments in the Industrial Revolution, inventions that have been made over time, world events such as the World Wars, the development of the PC and the World Wide Web, all the way into current day uh, economy. So in summary, understanding management history helps students learn the various perspectives of managerial thought some of which present a simplistic view of what it takes to be an effective manager. Understanding management history provides a basis for learning about organizational policies and practices. And understanding management history provides students with a broad base of ideas from which they can draw to deal with managerial challenges they will face in their careers. Now let's talk about the beginnings of modern management with the Industrial Revolution. For hundreds if not thousands of years, business was fairly stagnant and followed a basic process. Leading up to the 1700s and early 1800s, most households were engaged in agriculture or commercial trade of their goods. Agricultural pursuits were conducted on small farms and the trade and production of most manufacturing operations was done on a small scale in people's homes. This was called the domestic system of production. With the domestic systems of production, most of the work was done by hand, by family members in their own homes, or in lo local workrooms. Workers would manage the raw materials, the production process, as well as the distribution of the finished product, and family members were in charge of all aspects of the operation. These workers produced the entire product and were responsible to a large part for the pace and profitability of the operations. This method of working evolved substantially over the 1800s and 1900s during the Industrial Revolution, a period of time when a variety of important innovations spurred the growth of large-scale industrial 
organizations. This included the inventions of the steam engine by James Watt in 1775, the invention of the cotton gin by Eli Whitney in 1793, the invention of the telegraph by Samuel Morse in 1836, the telephone by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876, the incandescent light bulb by Thomas Edison in 1879, the airplane by Orville and Wilbur Wright in 1903, and the Model T Ford assembly line by Henry Ford in 1908. When we look at innovations in production, Industrial Revolution production innovations include using technology to accomplish work once done by hand by workers, such as the cotton gin or the sewing machine, harnessing electricity to provide lighting, power equipment, and to extend work hours, and introducing the concept of an assembly line, which sped up the manufacturing process greatly. When we look at innovations in transportation, some of the Industrial Revolution transportation innovations include the introduction of steam technology, enabling companies to ship products to distant locations, the development of the U.S. railroad system as a major mode of transportation for businesses to broaden their customer bases and to increase sales, the creation of the first automobile, which allowed workers to live farther away from work, and the introduction of the airplane, which allowed products and people to move more quickly to distant locations. When we look at innovations in communications, some of the Industrial Revolution's communication innovations include the development of the Morse code, a system of dots and dashes that could be transmitted electronically using the telegraph, and the use of the telegraph by companies to coordinate multiple business units over large distances in a timely manner. The invention of the telephone, which allowed the exchange of verbal language in a give-and-take manner. And the early development of wireless technology to send messages via Morse code over radio waves. Now let's look at the emergence of the factory. The introduction of the factory dramatically changed how work was done, where people worked, and how organizations were managed. Using factories, companies tried to harness the power of these industrial innovations to operate on a larger scale, with more productivity. Instead of small numbers of people working together, now large numbers of workers gathered in a single location to work together with new machinery to maximize productivity. One of the major benefits of factories over the domestic system of production was size or economies of scale. With more output per worker through the use of machinery, the cost per unit decreased, as did production time. Factory models had many advantages, but they also had many challenges. For example, with the dramatic and relatively dynamic introduction of factory models, there was limited oversight, rules or laws regarding workplace conditions, or provisions for employee safety concerns. A second challenge was how to manage these large groups of workers, which was a relatively new phenomenon. Some managers were biased in favor of friends or against particular groups of people, and some managers engaged in the practice of nepotism, showing favoritism toward family members by hiring them in leadership or managerial positions despite their lack of experience. Because of these challenges, factories had great potential, but they also had serious challenges and inefficiencies. So in summary, in talking about the beginnings of the modern of modern management with the Industrial Revolution, the modern view of management took root during the Industrial Revolution. Changes in production, changes in transportation, advances in communication, and the introduction of the fu factory fundamentally altered what work is, how it is done, where it is done, and how people interact. With this more current view of organizations as a collection of individuals working towards some organizational goal, we arrived at a rudimentary version of what we are familiar with today as the concept of management. This ends the first part of our lecture on the history of management.